Well, we also add other chemicals to aid the coagulation process, and we call those coagulant aids. And they're basically chemicals added in conjunction with a primary coagulant to improve coagulation, to strengthen the flock, to overcome cool water temperatures, also to reduce the amount of primary coagulant required for the coagulant dose. Coagulant aids will also reduce the production of sludge. And the common uh, aids used are activated silica, also weighting agents, and polyelectrolytes. And we'll look at each of these in a little more detail. First, we're going to look at activated silica. Activated silica is prepared on site by the operator by combining sodium silicate and hypochlorous acid. So sodium silicate is the chemical that's delivered to the plant and the operator will mix that with hypochlorous acid to form activated silica. And this is used uh, for a couple of reasons. One is to strengthen the flock, and that's the main advantage. It keeps the flock from breaking apart or shearing um, so that it will settle out, and any that carries over the sedimentation uh, basin weir that gets filtered will also stay together and be easily filtered out. It also increases the rate of coagulation and reduces the required coagulant dose as well as widening the effective pH range of that particular coagulant. As we'll see, aluminum sulfate has a limited pH range in which it works, so activated silica can increase that pH range. And if color is an issue, activated silica is effective at removing color. And in addition to these other benefits, it improves cold water flocculation. Flocculation doesn't occur very well in cold water for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is chemical reactions occur more slowly and two the water is more dense. So by, the, by using activated silica uh, when the water temperatures drop the flocculation process can be improved. Now when using it with alum, it is typically added after the alum, but it can be added before, but it's, it's usually added after the alum. But you don't want to add them at the same point since they react with one another. So that would be counterproductive. So typically you will add the alum first and then the activated silica once the alum has had a chance to perform its coagulation function. If you overdose silica, it will slow the flocculation process and cause problems with the filtration processes. So too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. We're going to look at weighting agents such as bentonite clay and they're added to help treat waters that are low in turbidity and high in color. Now the coagulation and flocculation process actually work better on waters that are high in turbidity. So if you don't have very much turbidity in the water, you can add some artificial turbidity in the form of bentonite clay or other weighting agents. And it also helps to remove color. The clay particles speed the flock formation as they increase the number of collisions between flocculating particles. Now in the flocculation process, particle collision is key. That's why we need appropriate mixing energy in the flocculation process. Powdered limestone and powdered silica are also used as weighting agents. Polyelectrolytes, also called polymer, actually more commonly called polymer by operators, are long carbon chain molecules that can produce highly charged ions when dissolved in water. And they're classified according to their charge. First we have cationic polyelectrolytes or cationic polymer. They produce positive charges when dissolved in water. Anionic polymers or anionic polyelectrolytes produce negative charged ions when dissolved in water. And then non-ionic polyelectrolytes, although they sound like they don't have any charge, uh, actually release positive and negatively charged ions when dissolved in water. So with cationic you get positive with anionic, you get negative, 
and with non-ionic, you get a combination of positive and negative. So they, if, if in effect, uh, neutralize one another.